Welcome to Bridging Gaps, the business podcast sharing the challenges and stories of fellow business owners. Hello and welcome to Bridging Gaps, the business podcast. I am Deborah Levitt, your host, and today is International Podcast Day, assuming that you're actually listening on the 30th of September. But as a result of International Podcast Day, which is celebrating all things podcast, whether you're a listener, whether you're a podcaster, whether you're just wondering and wanting to know more about them, I decided to do a special episode today. So rather than my normal format of having a guest and being in conversation with them, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about International Podcast day and I also want to share some of the lessons that I've learned from my guests so far just because they're really interesting people they're really inspiring and motivational and hearing about their journeys has pulled out some themes that I think um, well well personally I think that they're interesting and I'd like to share them with you I'll also include a little bit about what I heard and learned at the drive to digital conference earlier in the week and talk about flash briefings because that's something which has become very high on my radar and very new to me and then I'd like to share just a little bit with you about what podcasting has actually meant for me since I started podcasting back in February of this year. So I hope you enjoy the episode and next week we'll be back to normal with Claire Lee of Two Ducks joining me and more great conversations coming up. So here we go. is something relatively new to me. So while I've known about podcasts for a long time, to actually be involved, I only took that step this year in February when I started my podcast, the one you're listening to now. So I'm really enjoying having a look through the Twitter feeds to see what people are having to say about International Podcast Day. And I'm looking forward to catching up on some of the speakers that I wasn't able to hear because they were on in the middle of the night or I had other things on. So today there's lots Lots of tips on there. There's lots of people talking about where you can find their podcast. There's um, No Kid Hungry who's talking about the Add Passion Stir podcast where they talk to um, chefs and change makers and friends from the culinary world to discuss how food helps create social transformation. That is a direct quote from their tweet. Um, and, and lots of different things. There's infrastructure shows. There's people who want to listen to things about gaming or about food, about, um, success and business and, um, oh, what's this one? The Familia. It, it's the, um, oh, what does that say it is? The Familia podcast. Let me just have a little look. Um, it looks like it's a game. So it looks like a game. Can you tell that, that that's not something that I'm looking at um, as I'm not a gamer? So just this wide, uh, there, there's the Late Drinkers, the podcast, um, an indie pod, uh, which I suppose is what this is, an indie pod, because it's me doing it. It's not associated with any large organizations. And then there's people who are saying, oh, if you know something that you subscribe to, why not share it here? A commuters club. Um, It's got nothing to do with commuting, apparently, but will entertain you. Um, Oh, and then there's J'aime pas moi voix. Um, I don't love my voice. Um, So this is uh, obviously a French one. And then, oh, somebody's recommending, um, oh, let me see, Spotify, Audio Drama Sunday. This is Spotify Ideas. I don't know if it actually comes from Spotify or not. But just so much interesting and variety, the, the whole range of, of different podcasts, of different genres, of different things that you can listen to. It's not all about business. It's not all about, um, you know, TV shows, you know, so here's one. I secretly recorded my boyfriend. Um, does your other half think he's Batman? Then he needs to hear episode three of our podcast. Um, so I, I can only imagine what that is. I will be having a look at that one later on. Oh, there's Ook Audio, which I just kind of like, Ook Audio. So again, it's really about the fact that what, what I'm really enjoying about this is seeing the wide variety of podcasts that are coming up on here, seeing the 
willingness to share other people's podcasts as well as people promoting their own and putting, um, you know, facts out there as well. And really just seeing the, the, the community come together. I, I don't know how wide ranging this is in terms of um, how many people feel that it's a part of their day. It's the first time I'd heard of it, but it has been around since 2014, though admittedly the first year it was just a national podcast day and held just in the US. And then they realized that perhaps they were excluding a large portion of the world and therefore it became International Podcast Day. Somebody else who's quite small and, and is just continuing to, to podcast away and saying that they're keeping going because they love it and they want people to smile. Just, there's so much. So, so my suggestion to you is on the basis that you're listening to me, that means that you're probably into podcasts in some way, shape or form. So why not just go onto Twitter and onto Instagram? I haven't looked at those as yet in detail, um, but look for the hashtag International Podcast Day and you'll find loads of ideas and loads of suggestions of things to listen to. You can also go to internationalpodcastday.com and on there you'll find links to the um, the speakers that they've had, the podcasts that have been on, and replays of those which are on YouTube. I find it very interesting that YouTube is one of the top places to listen to podcasts. It always strikes me as a little bit um, backwards, I suppose, but it's great. It's a huge... Oops, excuse me. It's a huge search engine. So anyway, that is just what I wanted to share a little bit about what I'm experiencing so far with International Podcast Day. I hope that you've enjoyed listening to this little bit of my podcast, just talking about International Podcast Day. Coming up next, I'm going to share with you some of the the themes and, and inspiration that has come through from my guests on Bridging Gaps, the business podcast so far. approximately 32 people so far. So while this is my 23rd episode and 22 of those are interviews or conversations with people, I've already done some of the interviews for the the rest of this season. I'm actually at the point where I'm beginning to line people up for season three, so which will start in January. So what I've discovered over the course of these conversations is that everybody's got their own story. But through those stories, there are some constants and some themes that I've been picking up on that reach across no matter who it is that I'm speaking to and generally reach across whatever gender or age group somebody falls into. Since one of the key reasons for my podcast is to provide inspiration, to provide those feelings of, oh, it's not just me, and and to realize that the world that we're living in and have chosen to work in has its challenges and they affect everybody no matter where they are in their business career, I thought that I would just bring together some of those learnings for you and and just to, to see if you've recognized them as well. So the first point that I want to bring up is entrepreneurship is difficult. And Everybody you speak to talks about the challenges and we find it really difficult because on one side, and you hear this a lot about um, social media generally, people are out there and they're, they're putting on their best face to the world. So when you're having a really tough day and you, you're looking at what everybody else seems to be doing and how wonderful it all seems to be, you're comparing your worst day or your bad day to their public face and, and their fantastic moment that they're willing to share. And it's really important to remember that underneath that, for everybody, there are the bad days and there are the challenges, there are the ups and downs, there's the loneliness, the imposter syndrome, the difficulty in getting yourself to do something that you never realized was going to be a challenge for you in the future. So that's one of the key things that has come out across not just my my conversations, but when I'm also speaking to people who aren't on the podcast, it's it's a tough old world that we've decided to be to to be in. 
And pushing through and persevering and recognizing that this is not a reflection on you or your abilities is just part of the journey is a really important thing to help you to keep yourself well and to keep going and moving forward. Another element that has come up in multiple occasions is loneliness. So quite often people are starting businesses because they've been in a career already and they're taking this opportunity to either take advantage of redundancy or they've decided the time is now to actually start moving forward in whatever way they want to. And we see all the positives, we see all the good things about it, and we think that we've thought through all of the negatives. But then the reality comes in. And the reality of working for yourself, especially if you're working at home, is that it can be very lonely. And while your family and friends do their best to support you, if they don't have their own business, if they haven't been in a similar situation themselves, they may not fully understand where you're coming from. And it's really important to, again, recognize that this is not a reflection on you, but this is just a natural part of being an entrepreneur or being a business owner, and that you need to take steps to address this in whatever way works for you. So, for example, when I spoke to Rhiannon Ford of the Rhiannon Ford Divorce Consultancy the other week, Rhiannon talked about the fact that she likes working alone. She likes having her office at home. She doesn't feel a need to be out there and, you know, sitting in an office with other people. So she finds other ways to deal with the potential risks around loneliness. She likes that space that she needs, but she can go networking. She goes out dog walking. She fills that loneliness in different ways. Whereas other people, and I know a few people who have taken, you know, desks in co-working spaces because that gives them the interaction that they want. It gives them the, the ability to be speaking to people and to be around people while still developing and pushing forward with their own business. So it's all about recognizing that loneliness may strike you when you least expect it and that it's perfectly acceptable to acknowledge being lonely and to to really then identify what do you want to do? How do you need to deal with it that's going to make sense to you? Is it through networking? Is it through occasional co-working days where you go and meet somebody? Or do you just need the sound of other people? Can you go sit in a cafe or a hotel lounge and do some work there so that you've got that buzz around you? For me, strangely enough, one of the places that I do my best blog writing is when I'm sitting in a particular hotel lounge, there is something about the level of buzz there that I actually can tune it out, but it's there and it kind of supports me in getting things written. Whereas in other places, they might be too quiet or too loud and it just really works well for me. I find that I'm really productive when I'm there. So again, something that you'll have heard across many of the people that I've spoken to so far. Tom Watson spoke about the need to believe in yourself and what you're doing. This comes up again and again. We all go through, or most of us go through these points where we doubt what we're doing. We doubt our knowledge and we doubt our value. But to keep going, to keep fighting through those difficult times, to find the energy to overcome the loneliness, to to fight through the challenges of, of finding our niche and finding our way of working, you do have to believe in what you're doing. And I know that for me, while I've believed in my skills and my ability in many situations, I haven't necessarily always been entirely confident about the product that I'm offering. And it's a real challenge to get yourself to a point and to give yourself that talk that says, you know what? I can do this, I do have value, and I am bringing value, and I am worth it. And you have to have that belief, no matter what your business is, you could be coaching, you could be running a shop, you could be selling podcast services, whatever it is, you need to take that belief and know that you are offering something which brings value and that you are part and parcel of that value that you're bringing. And again, as we've listened to the different guests, this is a recurring theme throughout. Another aspect that has 
it actually taken me by surprise is the number of people who've talked to me about gratitude, whether it's a gratitude journal or some other means, and meditation. Paul Rayner, one of my guests from season one, shared with me outside of the conversation the impact that meditation had had on his life. Thomas um, uh, Thomas Svortka also talked about how meditation played an important role in his management of his health and well-being. Richard Maybury, who's coming up soon, also talked to me separate from the interview about how he makes sure that every day before he gets up, he spends a few moments thinking about gratitude and what he's grateful for. Notice that all of these people are men. And I'll be honest with you, this really surprised me because I thought that mindfulness and meditation and these types of things were still mainly um things that women did. So it was a real surprise to hear these guys talking to me about it and that they span, you know, the age range. It's not that they're of a certain age. It's it's all different ages. Now, of course, the women I've been speaking to have also talked about giving gratitude or meditation. Um, and people like Nikki Faulkner. Nikki spoke to me not so much about a specific um, gratitude or meditation, but just how she makes sure that she puts an end to her day by at the end of the day, she goes through and she thinks about everything that's happened that day. She thinks about something positive and she also plans what she's going to do the next day. And then she spends time cycling, which just kind of wraps up her day nicely. So it's a little bit of a combination of things. James Thompson, who I spoke to at the beginning of season two, my very first interview for this season. James had a three-lap approach, which I really liked. So James um, runs, he cycles, and one of the things that he does is he quite often joins some friends who are, who are actually quite critical to his success at Spokes um, on their the running evening on a Wednesday. And he told me that he now realizes and does this consciously that he's got three laps to kind of sort things out. So lap number one, he runs, and he just vents and he can be as, you know, unhappy, as angry, as frustrated, as self-pitying, whatever it is that comes to his mind, as he wants to be. In lap two, he runs and he's thinking about all of the things that are positive in his life, all of the good things, everything that's going well, everything that he needs to be grateful for. And then on lap three, as he's still running, he's now starting to think about what problems actually need to be fixed and which problems just need to be tabled. And, you know, they weren't there because we all have them. We have those moments when we think, why me? Um, and it feels like, you know, everything's resting on our shoulders. And then when we take a little step back, when we clear the air in our, in our minds, we're able to go forward. So I think it was really interesting and is really interesting to, to hear people and to hear their stories and what they do. Penny Power is somebody who I think was hugely inspirational. She's she's a really lovely person to speak to and incredibly honest about her experiences and the challenges that she faces. And she talked about how she looks at taking care of herself and how she tries to manage her own well-being. I spoke to her at a point when she was going through actually quite a tough time. They just had um, a variety of things happen around their business, around some of the normal challenges that we get um, sometimes in social media, which can be incredibly difficult and painful. And she shared how she feels about some of those things and how she's looking after herself and making sure that she's taking steps to stay strong and to look after herself. And I think our well-being is absolutely critical. And you can think of that as physical well-being. You can think of it as mental well-being. But one way or another, you need to look after yourself. And all of my guests have different ways of doing it. Some of them admit that they're not so good and that there are areas that they're maybe still working on. We all need to find the way that works for us. And we're all different, which means that we can try things that work for other people. But we shouldn't worry too much if they don't work for us. It's finding that combination 
of ways to look after yourself and ways that work for you. So for example, I have one friend who she does a book in five minutes, um, which is available on YouTube. And, and she loves reading business books. So she reads business books all the time, hence the fact that she's doing a book in five minutes. And what I love about Lindsay is she's so enthusiastic and she's so into them and she's really fantastic summarizing them. But for me, a book is for relaxing. A book is for just enjoyment. And I'm not that into reading business books. I would much rather, rather listen to one than to actually read one. So we have a different perspective on how reading and books fit into our lives. And that's absolutely acceptable. So again, the constant that's come through is different people, different ways of managing their work-life balance, or as a couple of people have said, their work-life integration. But it's really important to find the way that works for you. Those are some of the things that I've learned so far from my guests. I hope that you've enjoyed it. And don't forget, you can check out any of the previous episodes at bridgeroadconsultants.com forward slash podcast. If you prefer to use a particular podcast app, there are links to a large number of them on that web page as well. Or you can just search for Deborah Levitt or Bridging Gaps, the business podcast. Drive to Digital 2018 conference, which was looking at the future of audio. The conference covered some of the challenges and the government's commitment to moving the UK fully to digital in the future, and the fact that there was a need for a review of where we are and what needs to happen to take us there. But we also talked about devices, automobiles, and podcasting, and what role audio plays in our lives today. And it showed that voice itself is actually an interface that is age-friendly and also in cars can become increasingly important as it's safer, based on some tests that were done, to use than it is to actually have to fiddle with dials and, and knobs that are available. So the fact that Alexa Auto is coming soon and that we've got voice control coming out in so many of the smart speakers these days really shows some of the direction that we can expect to move towards in the future. I also found out that level five car automation. Now, for those of you who haven't come across this before, we hear about self-driving cars um, fairly regularly now, but what it actually refers to, are there are different levels of automation. And if I understand correctly, level three is the point that we are currently aiming for, various uh, manufacturers are currently aiming for in the fairly near term which is where the car will be able to take control um, as you're driving, but you will still essentially be the driver. You will still be called upon or be able to take control as and when necessary. But when we get to level five, which is looking at about 15 to 20 years away, that's when you are a passenger. You no longer have any responsibility for what the car is doing. And that is really exciting because it means a huge rethink about cars and what a car looks like and feels like and its purpose in the future. So we were hearing from Harman about some of the things that they're thinking about and some of the ways that we can think about vehicles in the future in that longer term picture. Overall, the key message was that audio just keeps on growing. Smart speakers are part of the reason for that. And as a result, all sorts of different businesses are making moves to change and to enable audio to be part of our lives in all sorts of new ways. Deezer, who you might know from streaming music, are looking at tying devices and audio together. So for example, your Fitbit could have Deezer on it and be playing the music for you or podcast straight from there. Currently, there are approximately 6.4 million people in the UK who listen to podcasts, and it's a 50-50 split as to whether they're listening in the home or outside of the home. And ad revenues are growing. So from 250 million US dollars last year, up to 500 million US dollars already this year. We're also starting to see podcasts being used in different ways to support television programs. So over the summer, Love Island had the Love Island podcast and Strictly Come Dancing from BBC 
also has a Strictly podcast. This means that you might watch something on TV, but you're then hearing about it and listening and being part of the conversation through audio rather than having to watch something else on TV. And that allows that conversation to expand beyond the realms of your home and to take it out into the car, into the park where you're running. So it's really interesting to see how it's all starting to shift. So overall, I think audio and podcasting itself are really exciting places to be at this point in time. And I'm looking forward to seeing how things have changed when hopefully I'm at Drive to Digital 2019. I thought I would just share with you a little bit about my journey with podcasting and what it means to me now. I started with a a very long-term view. I had no expectations that in the short term, this would have any impact on my business. It was something that I expected to take a year, possibly two years, before I started to, to really see anything from it. And I've been really surprised at the fact that by going through this very steep learning curve, by getting to know about podcasts and podcasting and how to edit and produce them and many of the different options that are available out there, that it's become something that I want to focus on, that it's become something that I want to be the main focus of my business. So by starting off with a podcast, by speaking to people, by having the absolute privilege of hearing their stories and and learning from them, and there's so many more wonderful stories to come. It's also now had an impact on me in, in changing the future direction of my business and where I'm taking things. And I've seen that from a number of people when I'm looking at all of the posts around International Podcast Day, you know, I'm seeing posts about people who are saying that this has changed their lives as well. And I'm not saying that it'll change yours. It's just that it's another avenue to explore. It's something else to look at. It's another way of of hearing people, of hearing stories of whether it's comedy, whether it's business, whether it's news. It's another way of learning for those of you who like to learn just by listening. Um, And it's another way to to get your message out there if you're somebody who's wanting to, to really just share your message more widely. So... I am so thrilled that I started this and I'm really looking forward to sharing the the upcoming episodes with you for season two and can't believe that I'm already starting to plan season three. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I'll be back next week in conversation with Claire Lee of Two Ducks in Wolf. Just before you go, I'd like to share some information with you from Moira Martin. Moira runs the Kelly's Charity Division, and there's an event coming up on the 14th of October for anybody who's interested in running for a fantastic cause. I know that you've got an event coming up on, I think, the 14th of October. Would you like to just tell me a little bit about it and how people can get involved if they want to? Yes, indeed. Well, this is an annual event. We've been holding um, a run in October for several years, but this event is at Lowesley Park. Um, It's beautiful grounds, quite an exclusive route, and we're offering, it's a run, but we've got half marathon, 10K and 5K, so any distance, uh, push yourself, push yourself. (laughs) But it's also a lovely family event because we've got a children's race, 1K, and the children all get a medal. Everybody gets a bespoke medal. It's four challenges. It's a wonderful charity based in Guildford in the southeast, Farnham and so on. And the, to enter, if you enter all the money that is raised goes directly to challenges. And you can enter online if you go to charity.kellystorage.co.uk You'll find all the details and um, you can make your donation there and know that it will go find its way directly to the charity. And we've got um, a fantastic pull this year because Susie Chan 
who's an ultra runner, um, is supporting the event. Sadly, she's unable to come on the day, the Sunday, October the 14th, but she's already done a recce and run part of it. She's recommending it highly, and she set a time so that um, you can try and beat Susie's time. Oh, that's so, fantastic. Yes, yeah. And there's also a king and queen of the hill event. <laughs> so um, whoever goes up this steep hill, you know, in the fastest time will also get some kind of acknowledgement. Uh, the mayor of Guildford is going to be there and their activities. We've got great refreshments locally supplied activities for the children. Yeah, come that along. Is... There's a massage afterwards in case you... you know, so can you get the yeah. massage even if you don't do the run? Well, <laughs> as long as you make a donation to the challenges. Okay. <laughs> no reason not to. <laughs> So once again, if you're interested in the Challengers Cross Country Challenge, it's the 14th of October at Lowesley Park. You can find all of the information out by going to charity.kellystorage.co.uk. And don't forget, all of the money that's raised will go directly to the Challengers Charity in the Southeast. Bridging Gaps, the business podcast, was produced by Deborah Levitt of Bridge Road Consultants Limited, with original music provided by Pete Dinley. You've been listening to Deborah Levitt on Bridging Gaps, the business podcast.